you know what we need to do? We need to get our snow tires loaded into the car so we can get them swapped out. I'm getting my oil changed and my snow tires put on. I've got a whole separate wheel set, it just came with the car. But it's got studded snow tires and I don't want to be driving up the pass without those on. So let's go get them out of the shed. Yeah, let's go get them out of storage and put them in the back seat so we can swap them out. If you ever want advice on how to get up to the ski hill safely, all wheel drive and four wheel drive is great, but nothing, and I mean nothing, beats good snow tires. I grew up in rural Northeast Vermont where a lot of like the roads to get to specific houses aren't plowed. I had to go up like a big hill where I live to get to my house. I'm telling you, snow tires matter way more. I had an old Toyota Corolla with a stick shift and a good pair of snow tires, nothing beat that. The best way to buy snow tires, in my opinion, I think Michelin makes the best stuff. It's like on Consumer Reports, it's rated the best, but I had really good luck with, I think it's called the Ice X, that snow tire rules. They're not cheap, but you know what? It's a lot cheaper than getting your car damaged or towed out of a ditch. Yeah, prioritize the snow tires. Those make a world of difference. You don't have to get studded tires. I only got them because they came with the car and they work well, but they are a pain because you can't put them on too early or you have to make sure you take them off quickly, but get good snow tires. I can't tell you how many people I see stuck on the side of the road. They've got these big Ford F-150s, these big um, Toyota 4Runners, Toyota Sequoias, you name it, Chevy Suburbans, and they all get stuck because everyone spends fifty, sixty thousand dollars on their SUV, and they don't spend the thousand bucks, two thousand bucks, whatever it may cost on the tires, and that's what really matters. Typically, for like a sedan, I only pay like, gosh, six hundred bucks maybe for snow tires. It's not that expensive, but I know SUVs are more. Yeah, if you have like a big expensive car, don't assume it's going to get you up to the mountains safely, especially out west, out in Idaho. We have these big climbs we have to get to go to our mountains. I know Utah and Colorado are kind of the same. Get good snow tires. It's worth it. And make sure you get them put on and you take them off so they don't wear out in the summer. This is really like basic stuff, but it's important. The best way to buy them on sale, get the Michelin on Costco. Like every six months, Costco has a deal where if you buy four tires, you get like $150 off, which I mean, that's easy. Those are nice tires. Costco will install them for you for like a discounted rate each winter and Michelin makes nice stuff. I, I own, own those tires driven in the icy parts of Northeast Vermont. I'm telling you, Michelin Ice X, that's the tire I like. Now the studs can have an advantage. If you see here on the tire, you've got these little metal studs. Those will break into the ice really well. They'll make sure you have good traction in the snow. But when there's not snow, when you have early season or late season, they can make it so you have worse traction on the cement and they wear out on the tires quicker. Things I've read have typically suggested, unless you're in extreme conditions, just go with the snow tires. But like I said, these came free with the car, so who might argue? And they definitely work well. Like I have a rear wheel drive vehicle and I've had no issue getting up the hill. I sometimes run into clearance issues, but usually I can kind of negotiate my way around that. But like I said, good snow tires. When it comes winter time, they can't be beat. When everyone thinks of ski safety, they think of helmets, they think of bindings, but you know what? A lot of times the biggest safety feature is just getting you up to the hill safely and getting you home safely. Automobile accidents in the winter are no joke and it's a very, very easy way to get really, really hurt. So take the time, make sure your car is specced out properly, you got everything taken care of before you rush up to the hill. I just wanted to talk to you guys about the skis that I'm gonna be reviewing. Now in the past, I've typically done my reviews by doing demos at local ski shops, and that works pretty well, but it's very limited on what I can test. So what I've been able to do is talk to a handful of companies. Literally every company that any major retailer carries, I sent all of these guys the same email saying, hey, here's who I am, I wanna review your skis. I don't want free skis, I'll send it back to you, but please, can I test and review your skis? If the ski was requested by you guys, I would actually send them a screenshot of your comment saying, hey, can you review the Headcore 99, whatever the ski might be. And a handful of them came through. 
Uh, a lot of them I'm still gonna have to do through the demo shop, but there were a few companies that kind of saw the opportunity and were like, yeah, you can test our skis. So the first one that really like stepped up was Black Crow, but those are the ski brands that I'm gonna kind of prioritize. And then from there, kind of while there's gaps in my schedule for reviewing skis, I'm gonna look at getting those demos from the local shops or from the, you know, from the mountain. First off, I'm gonna be demoing the Black Crow Draco Freebird. Now this was actually sent to me on accident. They meant to send me the carving ski, you know, the one that kind of has the cool tails. Um, they're a similar color to this ski, but I said, hey, you know, I'll review these and we'll just, just send me the other ones next. So for right now, I'm going to be reviewing these backcountry kind of powder skis from Black Crow. I don't have a ton of experience with Black Crow, but I'm excited to try them. And you know, while they are sending me the skis and I'm sending them back, for whatever reason, Black Crow only demos with Marker Kingpin. So I'm ordering my own boots. I'm paying like $400 for boots so that I can test these skis and then future backcountry skis. But you know, even though I'm not paying for this demo, I'm, I'm paying for it in one way or the other. So this will be my unbiased review of these skis. If I like them, I'll tell you. What I don't like about them, I'll tell you. We are gonna tell you the truth about skis because anybody who owns skis quickly finds that out on their own. The other thing I think I want to address is just that in the past winter I just kind of did ski reviews and I didn't kind of mix in this other content the reaction content the kind of vlog style scheme and I think that what people seem to be enjoying is the daily upload so I'm gonna try to keep that as true as I can I think probably like a good promise is four days a week because there's always one day that I have a hard time editing or getting the content out but yeah that's my plan is just to give you guys a mixture of vlog like ski videos um, reaction videos when the snow is not great or I can't get up to the mountain and then mix in the ski reviews. The ski reviews are like very labor intensive, which is fine. I, I don't mind that. It gives me good experience and things to talk about like throughout the rest of the year. But just so you know, like if you see a ski review come out, it takes about four or five times more work than the other videos just because there's a lot of editing, a lot of shots that go into it, it's a lot more labor intensive. Same for like the ski vlog, it's a little bit more labor intensive. So if you see less content, it's because I'm trying to do better quality, but I'm also gonna try to have like a healthy mix of reaction, vlog, and ski reviews. But you know, I there's only so many ski reviews I can do a week just realistically. I know you guys watch this stuff, I wanna be honest with you, I don't wanna just like stop uploading and you go, where's where's this content? Or, hey, how come you're not doing more ski reviews? I think it'll be good to have a healthy mixture of all three types of content. As far as skis I'm gonna review, we're gonna be starting off with Black Crow. They've been the most responsive. Then I've got a couple other small independent brands that are interested in sending me skis. We're gonna review some of those. I've also got some accessory companies that are gonna send me stuff. Again, I'm they're not paying for it, I'm just gonna give you my unbiased opinion, but something a little bit different, so you should see more reviews on the way. And then also eventually, once we get more powder, I would like to give you guys a full review of the Solomon QST-106. I have not skied on them yet, I have not given a review, I gave my review on the QST-98, but I don't wanna take them out when there's hardly any snow, it's raining right now. I don't think it's fair to assess a powder ski like this when there's very little powder. And, th and that's why I bought them. So once we get some more snow, that's when you'll see the QST-106 review. I'm eager to get on them. I'm eager to really give you my analysis on them, but I also wanna make sure that they're getting a fair platform to show. Same thing with the Black Crows. I'm really trying to make sure that I've got enough snow to ski on them, but I do have deadlines and when I'm gonna send them back. Anyway, just wanted to give you guys a heads up on what kind of content you'll be seeing. I'm also planning on testing and wearing my Volcom Gore-Tex jacket, and I can give you guys a full review of that, but that's just what's on the horizon as we go. More than anything, I'm excited to give you guys more content on skis, and I think with the new GoPro camera, there's a lot of cool stuff to be done on that. So I'm excited for more kind of vlog style skiing. The only problem I have right now is that the mountain is only open on weekends, which is normally when I ski with my kids, and I think a lot of like the fun skiing that you guys would enjoy is the stuff that I do Midweek. So midweek skiing is on the horizon. It should be here in the next week or two. I don't know. I appreciate you guys being willing to kind of try new content out because a lot of what I've been doing all summer is reaction content because there hasn't been any skiing to do. I appreciate all of you. Um, yeah, more than anything, you guys have been really great and really cool. So if you like this kind of content, please consider liking and subscribing. It helps my channel out a lot. But more than anything, just thank you for watching. I really appreciate it. And as always, I'll see you in the next one. See ya.